There are so many extraordinary people in this place, right here, right now. But as for me, I'm here without the extra. I'm here for the average, ordinary person coming to listen to amazing, inspiring people, while in reality, anyone can do this, because each of us have something to talk about. Now, I'm here to talk about a small, yet rather big aspect that has taken around five years of my life. Some of you may relate to this, but some of you won't. And allow me to underwhelm you as I say that I have been, and still am, growing up with conservative parents. To elaborate, don't wear really in clothing, and don't wear out with guys. It's all about modesty in our house. Now, what is modesty? According to a bunch of online sources, Modesty is appearance, behavior, and manner to avoid indecency. But according to me, modesty is much more than that. Modesty is a way to carry yourself, a way to present yourself. It's a way to understand that strength is not always reinventing the wheel from scratch, but taking the one that was already there. Modesty is taking other people's experiences, applying them to your own life, and understanding what you can benefit from them. Modesty is not being a teacher's pet. And modesty is not being religious. Even though you have to be modest to be religious, you don't have to be religious to be modest. Now, you know how they always say, think outside the box? Sometimes the box has some pretty good stuff in there. And I'm not saying don't question or explore or deliberate or open your third eye, but you know, the box has some pretty outdated things too, but you know, you can always take those things and improve them later on. Now, being a kid that's always modest in my communication, my clothing, and my Instagram feed, I have been seen on a slightly low-key, but rather high-key way as different. Now, that perception has made me prone to a bunch of comments over the years that weren't really so necessary. For example, why don't your parents let you do what you want? Or, you don't wear shorts in the summer? Seriously, what do you wear then? You know, at first, these comments used to really get to me, and they used to really make me upset. But then after a long, and I mean long, and like a five year long period of self-pity and anger, I had come to one conclusion. No matter what you do, people will always comment about it. If you're chill and you go out and you party and you do whatever you want, whenever you want, people are gonna see something you posted or your Snapchat story or just see you walking down the hallway or the street or maybe even like point 90 or make a comment about it. And if you don't and you hang out in places like your house and with your cat and you know, just stay at home every other Thursday night, oh boy. <laughs> You're close-minded, you're judgmental, you're closeted. You're not fulfilling your full potential as a teenager. You know, <laughs> And it's this whole double-edged sword, damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If you're high on the social ladder, you're a target. If you're low on the social ladder, you're also a target. It's like there's no escape from the mouths of people, ever. If you put makeup on and you filter your pictures, you're seen as fake and trying too hard. And if you don't, you're messy. You don't take care of yourself. If you eat whatever you want, whenever you want, like maybe that KFC you ordered at 3 a.m., you're irresponsible towards your body. But if you diet and instead like order KCAL while all your friends are eating McDonald's or bring a salad of your own to a social gathering, you're insecure and you focus too much on what people think. Guys who hang out with girls all the time are seen as players, but guys who don't hang out with girls are seen as, you know, closeted, insecure, antisocial. <laughs> girls who hang out with guys all the time are seen as loose, and things I really can't say on a stage in a public setting, but it doesn't really take a brain surgeon to find out what I'm trying to say here. I think you all know. And girls who don't are just ghalbena, innocent. I have heard story after story after story of girls being accused of things that they would never even consider doing. Well, they have, they have gained a really indecent reputation because of it. 
And then when they do things that counter that reputation, that counter what they're accused of, when they do the opposite of things people say about them, they're still being talked about. It just went from being loose and another, other like things I can't really say, to ea mu'mina malik. It's it's why. <laughs> Apparently, like these things, these comments range from things that are huge, that have to do with your reputation, that have to do with the opportunity of other people saying hi to you, of other people considering you someone close, someone to trust, or they can go to things that are completely irrelevant. Because apparently, regardless of your gender, if you like Starbucks, you're a basic white chick. But if you don't like Starbucks, they have the best coffee. What are you talking about? Now, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And if you and I have a simple three-minute conversation, including the time that we introduce ourselves to each other, you and I can probably come up with 30 more terms. Now, I have one question for you guys. Or actually, more than one, but let's start with one. Raise your hand if you have ever had someone comment on your overall appearance, your choices, your mentality, your beliefs, or anything that has to do with you. Okay. Now raise your hand if that comment or those words ever made you feel something along the lines of upset, angry, frustrated, or just straight up confused. Okay. Now, for a slightly more significant question. Raise your hand if you have ever said something or made a comment about somebody else's overall appearance, choices, just person in general. No shame, just be honest. <laughs> okay. Now, why? Why do we think we have the right to speak of other people, whether it's to their face or behind their back, okay? Seriously. <laughs> okay, why do, we, why do we feel like we have the right to do that? Well, when other people do it to us, we get angry and upset and feel under attack. I have heard more than once this phrase. Really? Really, guys? <laughs> Do you actually think that you're doing someone a favor when you throw out that comment that will echo in the minds of everybody else and probably potentially shatter that person and make them insecure about their beliefs and what they actually stand for? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Do you actually think that you're doing them a favor? Oh, and also, if you try to justify it by saying, oh, I'm just giving them some advice. Uh, I'm just trying to help them out because everyone has flaws. There's a way to do it. You don't have to throw that comment. You can take them aside and actually tell them how you feel and actually tell them the thing that you want to say in order to help them. And if you do that behind someone's back, well, honey, that's when your actions will never be justified. <laughs> so, imagine the time, the energy, and the effort we invest in talking about other people. The progress we would have made as a nation, as a community, as a species, would have been monumental. The progress we would have made would have been amazing. You know, because instead of spending every social situation talking about people, because when you do talk about people, you're seen as judgmental, but when you don't talk about people, you are lame and have nothing to say. Instead of spending that time making those judgments all the time, we could have actually been talking about something constructive. So, I would like to end this by a quote from one of my personal favorite movies, Mean Girls. Because, of course, I have NBC2 on my TV, and I am a basic chick. And of course I love Mean Girls. Who doesn't love Mean Girls? But if you haven't watched Mean Girls, seriously, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Regina George, guys, come on. Calling someone fat doesn't make you any skinnier. Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. And ruining someone's life doesn't make you any happier. 
all you need to do is solve the problem in front of you. I know it's much easier said than done and a lot has been said but nothing has been done lately about this and I feel like I'm doing something by standing here. <laughs> anyway, I know it's, it's much easier said than done but we should stop making people feel so self-conscious about their choices and about who they are and just let them be because when there is a time where you want to speak and you want to say something that is of any consequence or value, you got to make sure people are willing to listen.